Hello and welcome to a new lesson. This lesson will be the first lesson in the almost everything about Secure Shell course. This lesson is an introduction about Secure Shell. We will know together what is Secure Shell, how does Secure Shell work, the history of Secure Shell, and the uses of Secure Shell. Okay, let's start the lesson and our first question is what is Secure Shell? Secure Shell, or as to pronounce SSH, is a network protocol to exchange data in a secure way between two computers. The main purpose of SSH is to administrate and execute commands on a remote computer. SSH is used by other protocols such as Secure Copy Protocol or SCP and Secure File Transfer Protocol or SFTP to transfer and manage files between two computers. Okay, after we defined what is Secure Shell, let's take a look on how does Secure Shell work. Let's say that you are a Linux system administrator who is working from the company office in Cairo and there is an issue on the company's web server which is located in a data center in USA. As the IT guy who is responsible for the, the web server, you need to connect to the server in USA to solve the issue. So let me ask two questions. The first question is how can you connect to the remote server which is located in USA and do some work on the remote server? The second question is how can you be sure that any transferable data between your company and the remote server is secure? Okay, now let me hear your answer on the two questions. Great, you are right. You can connect to the remote server using the SSH protocol. The SSH protocol is the only way which will allow you to connect to a remote machine and it will guarantee that the communication between you and the remote server is secure. Okay, let's explain how does Secure Shell work on this image. Here your laptop and you installed a party software on the laptop. The party is the SSH client which will be used to connect to the remote web server via SSH protocol. <coughs> The party start a session to connect to the SSH server installed on the web server. The SSH server will try to verify that the party has the right authentication to accept the connection. Once the connection verified by the SSH server, a tunnel connection will be established and all data goes from the SSH client will be encrypted in the tunnel. And if someone in the middle is trying to sniff the data, he will get an encrypted data which he cannot understand. SSH server is the only one who can decrypt the data, and by that you are sure that the connection between your laptop and the server is secure. I think this is the simplest way to explain how does a secure shell work. Now let's move to the history of secure shell. The history of Secure Shell starts in 1995 when the Helsinki University of Technology, which is located in Finland, was a victim of password sniffing. At this time, there was a young researcher start developing SSH version 1 protocol and he started using it for himself. After a while, he realized that his product gets attention, so he released the SSH1 to the public as a free software with the source code in July 1995. By the end of the 1995 year, there were an estimated 20,000 users across the world adopted the SSH1. The researcher who founded the secure shell is Tato Yelenin. By the end of 1995, Tato Yelenin had founded SSH Communication Security. He founded the company to provide support for users who adopted SSH version 1. The later versions released by SSH Communications Security evolved into increasingly proprietary software. It is estimated that as of 2000, there were 2 million users of SSH. 
In 1999, developers wanting a free software version to be available went back to the older 1.2 release of the original SSH program, which was the last released under an open source license. Bjorn Gronvalds started working on the last open source release of the original SSH program. Shortly thereafter, OpenBSD developers forked uh, Gronvalds code and did extensive work on it. Creating OpenSSH, which shipped with the 2.6 release of OpenPSD, from this version a portability branch was formed to port OpenSSH to other operating systems. As 2005 OpenSSH was the single most popular SSH implementation coming by default in a large number of operating systems. And by this we took an overview on the history of Secure Shell, so let's move to some of Secure Shell uses. We use SSH for logging to a shell on a remote host. We use SSH for executing a single command on a remote host. We use the SSH to secure file transfer and we can combine SSH with our sync to backup copy and mirror files efficiently and securely. And for more information about shell, uh, secure shell uses, please read the guide which is coming with this course. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson. Hello and welcome to a new lesson. In this lesson we will verify if the secure shell is installed on a Linux machine or not. But first let's agree that SSH installed by default in most of Linux distributions. But you may find SSH not installed by default in some Linux distributions until you choose to install it during the installation process. Now let's verify if the SSH is installed or not. From the Linux terminal, I will type the command SSH SSH minus V capital. The minus V option here will verify the SSH version for us. Now I will press enter. As you see in the output result, there is open SSH 6.6.1p1, which verifies that this Linux machine has secure shell installed on it. The secure shell is open SSH and the version of open SSH is 6.6.1p1. Okay, now let's see the result for the command ssh-v on a Linux machine that has no secure shell installed on it. I will bring another terminal for a machine that has no secure shell installed on it. I will type the same command ssh-v capital to verify if secure shell is installed or not. Then I will press enter. As you see in the shown result, a message appears telling me that SSH command not found. And this message means that secure shell is not installed on this Linux machine. But as we agreed before, the SSH is installed by default in most of Linux distributions. And by the end of this lesson, we have seen together how to verify if the SSH is installed on Linux machine or not. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson. Hello and welcome to a new lesson. We will learn together how to install OpenSSH on a CentOS. As we agreed before that OpenSSH installed by default on most of Linux distributions out there, but you may find that OpenSSH not installed in some situations. Okay now, let's start our lesson. To install OpenSSH, type the command yum install open ssh dash server space open ssh dash clients this command will install the open ssh server so anyone can access this server via secure shell if he has the authentication to do that. 
and the open ssh dash clients will install the open ssh clients so you can use it to connect to another ssh server now press enter as you see the system show us which packages will be installed the system will install the open ssh server and open ssh clients the system also will install the dependency package for you the dependency package here as you see is open ssh now type y to continue the installation process and press enter now as you see the installation process has been successfully done and we need to start the ssh service by running the command system ctl start sshd dot service and press enter the system has started the ssh service successfully and by that we have seen how to install open ssh on cent os thank you for watching and see you in next lesson hello and welcome to a new lesson we will learn together how to install open ssh on an ubuntu distribution so let's start our lesson by typing the command apt dash get install open ssh dash server space open ssh dash client this command will install the server package and client package for open ssh and as we mentioned before in the last lesson the server package will allow anyone who has the permission to connect to this ubuntu machine via ssh protocol and and the client package will allow users on this ubuntu machine to connect to other ssh server okay now press enter to start the installation process as you see the system is asking if i want to continue the installation process type y and press enter the installation process begin now the installation process has successfully completed as you see where it says ufw it means that the system added the shell port to the firewall now we shall start the ssh service by running the command slash etc slash ini t dot d slash ssh space start and press enter as you see the ssh service started successfully and to verify that ssh service is running without any issue type service ssh status and press enter as you see the ssh service is active and running and by that we have seen how to install open ssh on an ubuntu thank you for watching and see you in next lesson hello and welcome to a new lesson we will learn together how to install open ssh on windows operating system first let's download the windows installer package of open ssh for windows from mls software website open your browser and type the following url www.mls-software.com slash open sshd.html now press enter to go to the download page now we are in the open ssh for windows download page scroll down To the last version which is open ssh 6.9 p1-b and go to the download link right click the link here and choose save link as and choose where to save the file i will save the file on the desktop then i will click on the save button to save the file in desktop
Now let me close the browser and bring the open SSHD file to the recording area. Now double click on the setup SSH icon to start the installation process. The installation process is very easy and it will take a few steps to finish the installation. As you see the first step is clicking next. Then as usual we will read the license agreement and select I accept the terms of the license agreement then click next now select the components to install I will leave it as it is because I want to install all components now click next from here you can change the destination folder for the installed files to change the destination folder for the installed files click on browse and choose your destination folder but I will leave the destination folder as it is and I will click next leave the start menu as it is and click next select run as local underscore system and click next from here you can change the SSH port I will leave it on the default port which is port 22 and click next from here you can choose the key size I will also leave this on the default size and click next select the local users and click next now SSH is installing on your system as you see the installation process has been completed click on finish ok now let's do a test on the open SSH for windows open the command prompt and type this command to connect to a remote machine via SSH from Windows operating system type SSH root at 192.168.8.54 now press enter now enter the root password for the remote machine press enter as you see you are now connected to the remote host via SSH and you are connecting from a Windows machine to exit from the remote host type exit and press enter as you see the connection to the remote host closed and by that we have seen how to install OpenSSH on Windows. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson. Hello and welcome to a new lesson. We will learn how to use the SSH to connect a remote host. First let's open the terminal. Ok now we are in the terminal and we want to connect a remote host using SSH to start executing commands and administering the remote host. The remote host configured with a static IP which is 192.168.8.54 and I want to connect the remote host with a specific username which is mtork please notice that mtork is already created on the remote host ok now let's start the lesson and type the following command ssh minus l mtork then 192.168.8.54 I shall execute the command now but let me first explain it SSH is a secure shell command and minus L is an option which we add to the SSH command to specify the username which will be used to connect or to log in to the remote machine the username in our case is mtork then I specified the remote host IP so this command will connect me to the remote host which is 192.168.8.54 with the username mtork ok now let's press enter to execute the command as you see we got a message that says the authenticity of host 192.168.8.54 can't be established this message appears if the remote host is not added to the known hosts file on the system 
we will check the known hosts file after a while but for now just type yes and press enter so I will type yes then press enter as you see a warning message appears telling us that the host 192.168.8.54 has been added to the list known hosts and the system is waiting to enter the password for user mtork so I will type the password then press enter as you see now we have logged into the remote host ssh2 with the username mtork now type the command who am i and press enter as you see the shown result is mtork which is the login user i used before to connect to the remote host okay now let's type pwd to check our path and press enter as you see we are in the home directory for user mtork so the command ssh minus l space mtork space 192.168.8.54 connected me to the remote host which is 192.168.8.54 and directed me to the home directory of user mtork Okay, now I need to exit from the remote host and back to the machine SSH1. So I will type exit, then press enter. As you see, the connection to the host 192.168.8.54 closed. Let's connect to the remote host. Again, type the command SSH space mtork and the sign at then specify the remote host IP which is 192.168.8.54 as you see here I didn't use the minus L option to specify the username I just added the at sign between the username mtork and the remote host IP and this is another way to specify the username which will be used to connect the remote host let's press enter enter the username password then press enter as you see this time the system didn't show me any message because the remote host is already added to the list known hosts okay let's check the known hosts file we mentioned before but first let me exit from the remote host so i will type exit then press enter and now let's display the known hosts file by typing the command cat slash root slash dot ssh dot known underscore hosts then press enter as you see the uh, known hosts file contain the remote host which is 192.168.8.54 the encryption algorithm and the generated public key the directory dot ssh and the file known underscore host is created automatically when i typed yes up there they created automatically when i typed yes here also note that the known hosts file and the .ssh directory created under user root because I logged into ssh1 as user root so if you logged in with another user you will find the known hosts file and the .ssh directory under the home directory of your logged in user and by that we have learned how to connect to a remote host with a specific username also we have checked the known hosts file Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson. Hello and welcome to a new lesson. We will learn together how can we connect to a remote host on a different SSH port. As we mentioned before the SSH default port is 22 but most of time you will be connected to a remote host on a different port rather than 22. Okay first let me show you how to change the default SSH port on the remote host and we will discuss this part in details in the securing the secure shell section but for now just apply the changing default ssh port steps so that we can continue our main object in this lesson which is 
how can we connect to a remote host on a different SSH port? Okay, let's start changing the default SSH port on the remote host. Let me bring the remote host terminal here to the recording area. Okay, now I am on the remote host terminal. So let's edit the SSH configuration file by running the following command vi space slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config then press enter to edit the file okay now press on the i letter on the keyboard to start editing the configuration file then go to this line which has a value 22 which is the default ssh port then remove the hashtag here and change the number 22 to the new ssh port let me change the number 22 to the number 3212 which means that the new port for the ssh will be uh, 3212 okay now press the escape button on the keyboard then uh, press two dots then W then Q and press enter to save the configuration file now restart the SSH service by running the following command system CTL restart SSS SSHD dot service then press enter to restart the service now the SSH service has been restarted so let's stop the firewall service and disable the SE Linux to stop the firewall service type the following command system ctl stop firewall d dot service and press enter to execute the command and now let's disable the SE Linux by running the following command set enforce space 0 and press enter please don't worry we will discuss how to configure the firewall and SE Linux to allow the new SSH port in the future lessons for now just follow what I did okay now let us see how can we connect to the remote host on the port 3212 let's go back to ssh1 terminal now type the following command ssh mtorq at 192.168.8.54 sorry i made a mistake here this user should be mtorq this command should connect me to the remote host which is 192.168.8.54 with the username mtorq but I didn't specify the new shell port yet in the command so I will add minus sorry I will add minus p option to the command and after the minus p option i will add the new shell port which we configured the new port is 3212 and i will take a space between the minus p option and the new port so this command will connect me to the remote host which is 192.168.8.54 on the ssh port number 3212 with the username mtorq now press enter and type mtorq's password then press enter as you see i logged into ssh2 which is a remote host and by that we have seen how to connect to a remote host on a different ssh port Thank you for watching and see you in next lesson.
Hello and welcome to a new lesson. We will learn together how to connect to a remote host and log into a specific directory on the remote host. Let's say that I want to connect to the remote host, which is 192.168.8.54, and log into the directory dir2, which in the path slash home slash mtorque slash dir1 slash dir2 so what shall I do I have two ways to do that the first way is to connect to the remote host then from the remote host running the cd command to the specific directory or we can do it by a second way which is the object of this lesson Okay, let's start the lesson and type the following command ssh minus t m torque at 192.168.8.54 then the two quotation mark and type cd slash home slash mtorque slash dir1 slash dir2 then semicolon then bash and close the two quotation okay let me explain this command before executing it this command will connect me to the remote host 192.168.8.54 then it will redirect me to the dir2 directory the minus t option and the bash will help in executing the command which is between the two quotations and stay logged in to the remote host now let's press enter now type the password for user mtorque and press enter as you see we are logged into the remote host which is ssh2 so let's check our pass i will type pwd and press enter as you see we are in the dire 2 directory as we wanted and by that we have seen how can we log into a specific directory thank you for watching and see you in next lesson hello and welcome to a new lesson in the previous lesson, we have learned how to log into a specific directory using SSH. But what if I just want to execute a command on a remote host without logging to the remote host? Let us see how can we do it. Type the following command, SSH. Sorry. Type the command SSH. mtorque at 192.168.8.54 then do a quotation mark or a two quotations mark and type touch space slash tim slash 19 joule dot txt then close the two quotations by this command i will create a file named 19 joule dot txt on the remote host which is 192.168.8.54 without login to the remote host also please notice that, the, that this file which is satashajul.txt will be created under the temp directory which in the remote host now let's press enter now type the password for user mtorque and press enter as you see the command executed successfully but i still on the ssh1 machine so this command didn't log me into the remote host which is 192.168.8.54 okay let's check if the file 19joule.txt created on the remote host or not i will bring the remote host terminal to the recording area 
and I will go to the temp directory by running the command cd slash temp then enter now I will list the files under the temp directory by running the command ls and press enter as you see the file 19joule.txt has created successfully on the remote machine which is ssh2 and by that we have seen how to execute a command on a remote host without logging to the remote host thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson hello and welcome to a new lesson we will learn together how to copy file using the scp command to a remote host okay first let's define the scp or secure copy protocol scp is similar to the linux copy command which is cp both commands scp and cp are using to copy files between two destinations but the big difference is that the scp command can copy files to a remote machine while the cp command copy files between two destinations on a local machine also the scp command copy files securely between hosts on a network scp command uses ssh for data transfer and uses the same authentication and provides the same security as ssh okay now after we have defined the secure copy protocol let us see how to transfer a file to a remote host first let's create a one gigabyte file using the dd command type the following command dd f equal slash dev slash zero space of equal file one.txt space bs equal one space count equal zero space seek equal one g capital this command will create a file and the file name sorry i will put one here to be file one.txt so this command will create a file and this file will be file one.txt and the size of this file will be one gigabyte now press enter to create the file okay now we have created a one gigabyte file so let's verify that by typing ls minus lh and press enter as you see the file one.txt is here and the size of this file is one gigabyte now let's copy the file one.txt to the remote host using the scp command and to do that type the following command scp space file one.txt space in torque at 192.168.8.54 and two dots slash home slash in torque this command will copy the file one.txt to the remote host which is 192.168.8.54 and the copied file will be stored in the slash home slash mtor on the remote host now press enter now type the mtor password and press enter as you see the copying process started and it shows you some information like the copying speed sorry like the copying speed and the estimated time to finish the copying process this percentage show you that the scp has transferred 100 percent of the file one.txt as you see now the copying process finished so let's create other files and check how can we copy multiple files using the secure copy command I will use the same dd command to create the files I will name this file 2 and press enter I will use the same command again and I will name this file 3.txt and press enter to create the file now I have created two files file 2.txt and file 3.txt and the size of each file is one gigabyte okay let's copy the two files to the remote host using the scp command 
but first let me clear the screen by typing the command clear and press enter now type the following command scp space file 2.txt space file 3.txt then mtorque at 192.168.8.54 sorry dot .54 and the two dots then slash home slash mtorque as you see to transfer multiple files using the scp command you will type each file name or the full path and separate between the files names with a space so this command will copy the file 2.txt and file 3.txt to the remote host 192.168.8.54 and the copied file will be stored in the slash home slash mtorc directory now press enter now type the password for user mtorc and press enter as you see the copying process started please notice that this number here show you the transferable data size of the file 3.txt and the estimated time here as we mentioned before and this is the speed of transferable data on the network now we have seen how to copy file or multiple files to a remote host using scp command thank you for watching and see you in next lesson hello and welcome to a new lesson in this lesson we will learn how to transfer files from a remote host or you can say downloading files to our machine from a remote host using secure copy okay let's start the lesson let's go to the downloads directory so i will type cd space downloads and press enter now i'm in the downloads directory and i will copy a file from the remote host to the downloads directory i want to download a file from the remote host 192.168.8.54 the file name is file.zip and it's located in slash home slash mtorque on the remote host so let's type the following command to download the file type scp mtorque at 192.168.8.54 two dots slash home slash mtorque slash file dot zip in this command i specify the login username the remote host ip and the full path to the file .zip, which is a file I want to download from the remote host. But I still need to specify the location where the file .zip will be saved on. So I will type dot .here and the dot .means that the file .zip will be saved on the current working directory, which is downloads directory. Okay, now let's explain this command again. This command will download the file .zip, which on the remote host 192.168.8.54 to my SSH1 machine and this file will be saved in the downloads directory. Now press enter to execute the command. Type the password for user mtorc and press enter. As you see, the secure copy command is downloading the file to our machine. And now the downloading process has been finished. Now let's check the file by running the ls command. So I will type ls and press enter. As you see, the file.zip is there and we have successfully downloaded it from the remote host. And by that we have finished our lesson. Thank you for watching and see you in next lesson. Okay, we have learned it together how to copy files using the secure copy command. So what about copying an entire directory? Let's say that I want to copy the downloads directory to the remote host. How can I do that? 
Let's start the lesson and see how can we copy an entire directory. Type the following command to copy the downloads directory to the remote host. Type scp minus r option slash root slash downloads root at 192.168.8.54 then two dots slash root as you see in this command I added the minus r option the minus r here will allow us to copy directories then I specified the full path for the directory which will be copied to the remote host then I specified the login username to the remote host which is the root username the remote host IP and the location for the COVID directory on the remote host. So this command will copy the downloads directory from our machine to slash root on the remote host. Now press enter to execute the command and type the password for user root and press enter. As you see the copying process started and we will not see many files here because the downloads directory has only one file which is file.zip. Now as you see the copying process has been finished and the directory downloads has been copied to the remote host. Ok now we have learned how to copy an entire directory to a remote host. So what about copying an entire directory from the remote host? Okay, let's say that I want to copy the downloads directory from the remote host to our local machine, which is SSH1. Let's first type ls and press enter. As you see, the downloads directory is already on our machine, so I will delete this directory first. I will type rm minus rv f space downloads and press enter now we have deleted the downloads directory so let's copy the downloads directory from the remote host type the following command scp space minus r root at 192.168.8.54 two dots slash root slash downloads space slash root Okay, this command will connect to the remote host, which is 192.168.8.54 using the username root and will copy the downloads directory to the slash root directory on our local machine. Now press enter. Type the password for user root. and press enter the copying process started and it will take 16 seconds as you see the copying process has been finished so let's check if the downloads directory has been copied to our machine or not type ls command sorry type ls command and press enter as you see the downloads directory has been copied to our machine and by that we have learned how to copy an entire directory using the secure copy command. Thank you for watching and see you in next lesson.
todo
thing is the first this and x so type and the moment to be see for first thing of thing is the The first is so type and the moment to stop. of things type and the moment to stop. of things is the first is so type and Next, 
el
Hello and welcome to a new lesson. We will see how to lock the screen session. Also, we will see how can we exit from the screen utility. Okay, from the SSH2 machine terminal, let's type screen, screen and press enter. As you see now, we have an open screen. So let's type the top command and press enter. Okay, now maybe I will go to bring a cup of coffee. So I want to look this screen till I come back. To look the screen, I'll press on Control A and X. So let's press Control A and X. As you see now, the screen is locked and I have to enter the root password to unlock the screen. So let's type the password for user root and press enter. As you see now, I unlocked the screen. Now, let us see how can we exit from the screen utility. First, let's terminate the top command by pressing on Ctrl C. Now, to exit the screen, type exit and press enter. As you see now, the screen is terminating. And by that, we get to the end of our lesson. See you in next lesson.
तब
And bucket can And bucket can good And bucket to scan at K in So that's it. B. V. And bucket to scan And bucket to scan at And bucket to scan at K in the infinite So that's it. B. V.
and bucket to scan and bucket to scan at okay in the city so that's it Hello to a new lesson. This lesson will be the first lesson in the secure the secure shell section. From this lesson, we will start learning the required techniques to secure the secure shell service. And our first lesson will be how to change the default SSH port. Okay, first, let me ask you why we need to change the default SSH port to another port. We need to change the default SSH port to another port because all possible attacker on our system know the default SSH port. So the first thing they will do is trying to connect to the default SSH port and if they find the default port open they will try to crack the password for any user on the system and by default they will start trying to crack the root password. Now our duty is preventing those possible attackers from attacking our system. So when we change the default SSH port, most of possible attacker will give up from attacking our system because they only know the default SSH port and they can't easily guess the new SSH port. Okay now, let us see how can we change the default SSH port. From the Linux terminal, I will edit the SSH configuration file. So I will type nano slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config and press enter now i am in ssh configuration file so let's go down till the port line okay here is the port line now let me move the hashtag and let's change the port to any port number so i will change the 22 to 1881 so the new port will be 1881 now to save the file let's click on ctrl x now type y and press enter to save our setting okay now we have saved the ssh configuration file and we need to restart the ssh service to apply our settings so let's type system 
ctl space restart space sshd dot service and press enter now we applied the new setting so let's open the party and connect it to ssh2 machine on the new port so i will open party i will type here the ip for ssh2 machine the ip is 192.168.8.54 and under the port i will type the new port which is 1881 Okay, now click open to connect to the server. As you see, the connection refused and it gives me a network error. So why I can't connect to SSH2 machine? To connect to the SSH2 machine, we have to allow connection to the new port from the firewall. So let us set the firewall to accept connection on the port 1881. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. Okay, now we are in the terminal. Let's add a rule to the Linux firewall. So type firewall dash cmd space minus minus zone equal public space minus minus add dash dash port equal 1881 slash tcp space minus minus permanent okay now uh, let's explain this rule we use the firewall cmd command to configure the firewall firewall after that i told the firewall that you will add this rule to the public zoom then i specified the port which i want it to be opened in the firewall and i specified that this port is a TCP protocol. Finally, I added minus minus permanent to tell the firewall that this is a permanent rule. Okay, now press enter. As you see, the rule has been added successfully. Now we need to start the firewall service to apply the modifications we did. So type system CTL restart firewall D dot service and press enter okay now let's try to connect from the body to ssh2 machine so i will open the party i will type the ssh2 machine ip here 192.168.8.54 then i will type the new port which is 1881 and i will click open I will click on yes to add the host to my trusted host. Then I will type the root user and press enter. Now I will type the password for user root and press enter. As you see it works and now I am connected to SSH2 machine with uh, the new port. And by that we get to the end of the lesson. Thank you for watching and see you in next lesson. Okay, we have seen in the previous lesson how we changed the default SSH port to a new port. And we will see in this lesson how can we disable the direct access for user root on SSH service. If you still remember from the last lesson, I said that the possible attacker will try to connect to the SSH default port and he will try to guess the user root password. The attacker knows that the user root is the super user who has all privileges on the system. So he thinks that he will own your system if he cracked the root's password. So we will disable the direct access for user root on SSH service and let the attacker take a long time to guess what is the user he should use to try accessing your system and for sure he will give up after a while. Okay, now from the Linux terminal, let's edit the SSH configuration file. So I will type nano slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config and press enter. Okay, now we have opened the configuration file. So let's go down until we find the permit root login. So I will go down.
until this line permit root login space yes now to disable the direct access for user root remove the hashtag and modify the yes option to no so I will delete yes and type no okay now let us save the configuration file click on Control X then type Y and press enter now we have saved the configuration file so let's restart the SSH service to apply the new modification to start the SSH service type system ctl sshd dot service sorry I will add a restart after system ctl so it should be system ctl restart sshd dot service now press enter okay now let's open the body and try to connect to ssh2 machine with user root okay here i will type the ip for ssh2 machine and i will type the port which is 1881 then i will click open I will log in as the user root and press enter. The system asks me for root password. I will type the password for user root and press enter. Okay, as you see, it says access denied, which means that the root is not allowed to connect to the system via SSH. Now let's back to our terminal okay now we disable the direct root access for user root so how can we connect to the ssh2 machine without the user root first we will create a new user on the system and to create a new user type user add then i will type the user which is secret weapon and press enter now set a password for user secret weapon by running the command password then the username which is secret weapon and press enter type the new password for user and press enter type the same password again and press enter now we have set a password for user secret weapon so let's open party again type the ip for ssh2 machine and type the port 1881 now click open now I will log in as user secret weapon. So I will type secret weapon and press enter. Then I will type the password for user secret weapon and press enter. Now as you see I am logged in as the user secret weapon and to switch to the user root type switch user command which is su and press enter. Now type the password for user root and press enter. Now as you see I switch it to the user root and by that we have learned how to disable the direct access for user root and how did we use another user to access the shell and from this user how can we switch to the user root and by that we get to the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching and see you in next lesson. Hello to a new lesson, we will learn together how to allow access to the SSH service for a certain user. Most of hackers are searching for weak systems that don't have layers of security. Most of hackers search for systems that work on the default SSH port, systems that they can log in as user root and start brute force the root's password. So 
All what we do in the secure the secure shell section is adding layers of security to the SSH service to make it hard to access our system. So allowing access to the SSH service for a certain user is a layer of security we add to make it hard to access our system. So let us see how can we allow access to the SSH service for a certain user. First, let's edit the SSH configuration file from the terminal. So I will type nano slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config and enter now we have opened the ssh configuration file so let's go to the end of the file now we are in the end of the configuration file so let's write a comment to write a comment inside a configuration file you will type the hashtag then you will write your comment my comment will be allow access to user secret weapon you may not write this comment but i prefer to write it to remind you what you are doing here now i will go to a new line now let us say that I want to allow access to SSH service for user secret weapon. So type allow users space secret weapon. If you want to add any other users, take a space and type the user. So if I want to allow access to SSH service for another user such as user mtork i will take a space and type mtork but i will remove mtork because i want to allow access to ssh service for the user secret weapon only now let us save our modification so press ctrl x then type y and press enter now let's start the ssh service to apply our modifications type system ctl restart sshd sorry sshd dot service and press enter now let's open the party to connect the ssh2 machine i have opened the party i will type the ip for ssh2 machine and i will type the port now I will press open. Now try to log in as user mtork. And if you still remember, I didn't allow this user to access shell service. So let's press enter and see what will happen. Now let's type the password for user mtork and press enter. As you see, the system shows us access denied. And that's because we didn't allow this user to access shell service. Now let's try to access with user secret weapon. I will close this party window. I will open another party. And then I will type the IP for SSH2 machine. And I will type the port, which is 1881. Then I will click open. Now I will log in as the user secret weapon. Press enter. And type the password for user secret weapon. And press enter. As you see, I am logged in now as user secret weapon. And by that, we have seen how we added another layer of security to the SSH service by allowing the access to SSH service for a certain user. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson. Hello to a new lesson. We will see how can we deny access to SSH service from known IP. So let's edit the hostess.deny file. Type nano slash etc slash hostess dot deny from this file we can deny accessing to any service on the system but we will use 
this file in our course to deny access to SSH service only. Let's press enter to edit the file. Now we opened the hostess.deny file. So let's go down. Okay, now I want to deny access to SSH service from certain IPs. So I will type the name of the service, which is SSHD, then add two dots and start typing your denied list of IPs. I will type 192.168.8.100. Okay, that means that the IP 192.168.8.100 denied from access the SSH service and you may add other IPs by adding a comma between each IP. So to add another IP to the denied list, I will add a comma after this IP. Then I will add the second IP 192.168.8.51. So now we have two IPs in the denied list. Let us save our modification by pressing on control x then type y and press enter now we need to restart the ssh service to apply the modification we did so type system ctl restart sshd dot service and press enter now let's try to connect to the shell service from the ssh1 machine SSH1 machine has the IP 192.168.8.100 which we already added to the hostess.deny file. So I will open the SSH1 machine terminal. Now from the SSH1 machine type SSH minus P1881 secret weapon at 192.168.8.54 and press enter as you see the connection reset by peer and we get this error because we denied access to ssh service on ssh2 machine from the ssh1 machine okay now we have learned how to deny access to ssh service from non ips so thank you for watching and see you in next lesson Okay, we have seen together how did we deny access to SSH service from known IPs. So, let us see how can we allow access to SSH service from known IPs. Our scenario is to allow access to SSH service on SSH2 machine from SSH1 machine. I will edit the hostess.allow file. So, let's type the following command nano slash etc slash hostess.allow the hostess.allow file is used to allow access to any service on our system but we will use it in our course to allow access to ssh service okay let's press enter now let's go down to put the access rule first we will specify the service name which is sshd then i will put two dots after that, I will type the IP address, which is 192.168.8.100. Okay, this rule means allow the connection from the IP 192.168.8.100 to the SSH service on this machine, which is SSH2 machine. Now, press on Control X, then type Y and press Enter to save the file. Okay, now we allowed access to SSH service from the IP 192.168.8.100 and to increase server security, we are going to connect to SSH service on SSH2 machine from this IP only, which means that any other IPs except the IP 192.168.8.100 .100 will be denied from access to SSH service on SSH2 machine. And to do that, we need to deny access to SSH machine from all other IPs. So let's edit hostess.deny file. I will type nano slash etc slash hostess.deny and press enter. Now let's go down and modify this rule 
so I will delete this rule and I will replace it with uh, all okay this rule means deny access to SSH service from all IPs and if you remember we added the IP 192.168.8.100 to hosts.allow file so we have two rules one said accept access to SSH service from 192.168.8.100 and the other one said deny access to SSH service from all IPs okay let me explain something here to make things clear the hosts dot allow file has the priority so the system will apply all rules inside hosts dot allow after that all rules inside hosts dot deny will be applied okay what if we have opposite rules inside the hosts dot allow and hosts dot deny file let's say that the rule inside hosts dot allow is sshd two dots one nine two dot one six eight dot eight dot one hundred so this rule inside hosts dot allow and the rule inside hosts dot deny is sshd two dots one nine two dot one six eight dot eight dot one hundred and this rule inside hosts dot deny so the rule inside hosts dot allow allow access to ssh service from 192.168.8.100 and the rule inside hosts dot deny deny access to the same ip which is 192.168.8.100 so we have to opposite rule here as we allow and deny access to ssh service from the same ip so which rule will be applied the rule inside hostess dot allow or the rule inside hostess dot deny what do you think okay the system will apply the allow access rule inside hostess dot allow and will ignore the deny access rule inside hostess dot deny so let's agree that if we have opposite rules then the hostess dot allow rules will overwrite what inside hostess dot deny okay uh, now let's remove all this and keep the rule sshd two dots all which mean deny access to ssh service on this machine from all ips okay uh, now let's save the file i will press on Control x then type y and press enter okay now uh, let's try to access the system from any ip except 192.168.8.100 so i will open a party and i will connect to ssh2 machine so i will type the ip 192.168.8.54 and we change it the port to one 881 then i will click open as you see the system refused the connection and that's because uh, we denied access to ssh service on ssh2 machine from any ip except the ip 192.168.8.100 so let's try to access from ssh1 machine so let's open the terminal on ssh1 okay here we are on ssh1 machine and as you know ssh1 machine has the ip 192.168.8.100 so it should connect to ssh2 machine without issues because we added this ip to hostess.allow file on ssh2 machine so let's connect to ssh service on ssh2 machine so I will type SSH then minus P and the port on SSH2 machine which is 1881 and our user which was uh, secure or sorry it was secret 
weapon at 192.168.8.54 now press enter as you see the system asks me to enter the password for user secret weapon so I will type the password and press enter as you see I have successfully connected to SSH service on SSH machine so we have learned how to connect to SSH service from known IPs thank you for watching and See you in next lecture. I think Option. Thank you. Next. Good. I think from fixed up. Next. 
Using option, but it's like print. Get thankful. Next, good. I think from fifty up six. Who's the is so. Option, but it's high print. Get thankful. So, like, to rest. Option, but it's high print. Get thankful. So, like, to rest. Option, but it's high print. Get thankful. Next, good. I think from fifty up six. Who's top? This is so. Option, but it's high print. We get thankful, we get thankful, we get thankful. Next, good. Oh, tend to good. Oh, take so good. The good. The next, okay, good. So, that's the shape. I'll go. Say, the end. No, I. So, I put one rest could be cure. No, oh, tend to put optic so would the next keyboard so that slash or say the end. No, I. So, we have so no Not 